This is Jane Lowe and I'm at SyncCon 2025 here in Singapore and with me today I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Leonard who is with Hudson Rock to talk to us about Info Stealers. So thank you so much Leonid for your time today. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, so uh, Leonid, yeah, you talked about in your keynote presentation earlier about Info Stealers. So I guess that from the name itself, it means that these are malware or malicious software that steal information. That's correct. That's correct. Info stealers, as the name suggests, this is the malware, malicious software that knows how to steal critical information from the computer. And when I mean critical information, it's usually the passwords stored inside the browsers. So on a daily basis, people store their digital life inside those browsers. It can be personal account, it can be bank account, workplace related data. So the info stealers they know how to find this data and basically send to the attacker. So this is what info stealers are doing. So these are information that we store in our browsers. So for example, when we go to our online banking, sometimes we, you know, uh, we, uh, there will be a pop up to say, do you want to save your user ID? Do you want to save your password? And if you click yes, then it's saved onto the browser. That's correct, that's correct. For every time that you go and open any kind of account, you have this pop-up message that asks you, would you like to store your credentials? And people like the convenience that will be stored in one place. But the bad guys, they also like this convenience because later they're going to use the info stealers to steal exactly this kind of information. So the info stealers only steal information from the browsers or do they, are they smart enough to go to other places in our computer to steal information? So unfortunately they're smart enough to do multiple kinds of things, but at stage number one they're going to definitely steal the data from the browsers. But at stage number two they're going to do some kind of scan of the device, of the infected computer, to understand if there's maybe kind of interesting files, maybe related to your work or personal data that can be also stolen and they also like to check if there's a crypto, cryptocurrency related information, so they can steal that too. So it's not only the browsers, it's a much bigger problem. Right, so how do these uh, attackers, uh, how do they get this info stealer into our computer? How do they deliver it? So there's a few ways, some of them are pretty creative. So what they do, first of all, they need to get the malware, okay? So they do that by renting the malware from other threat actors, and they do it on the dark web, so when they rent this malware, and by the way, they pay only 200 US dollars a month mm. for this malware, like a Netflix subscription. And then they get delivered in different ways. First of all, we see a lot of people infected by downloading software from the torrents. So the pirated software is a source number one for those kinds of infections. People look how not to pay, for example, for the Photoshop. They download pirated Photoshop. They download pirated Office Suite. But actually, it's a trade-off. They don't pay for the software, but they pay with their own data and their own passwords because it's an info stealer. This is option number one. Option number two, threat actors, the, the hackers, they like to set up uh, completely fake sites. So for example, if you're looking for um, some kind of software or maybe some kind of another topic that you're interested, you actually can land on a completely fa fake site it can trick you to download completely fake software or service that is also an info stealer. There's also a way that it simply can reach your inbox, a phishing email, with some kind of urgency that you right now need to click on this file or otherwise something will happen. So people click and this is the info stealers. So this is one of the common way how the completely normal people can be infected with this malware. Because the ways how the bad guys deliver this to the, their victims can hit anyone in any industry, in any business, also workers and also unsuspecting individuals and even government officials. Can I just assume that uh, this is uh, not just on a desktop computer but also on our mobile phones as well? So this is interesting because most of the people syn synchronize the same profile between the computer and the mobile phone. So when you store your credentials to your applications on the mobile phone, they'll be synchronized with the same profile on the computer. So stealers will affect also the computer and also the data from the phone. We still know that the majority of the people use Windows-based devices mm. and the attackers, they know this. So they target mostly the win Windows-based devices right. because they're a majority. Mm. But they still know that there's the people that use Mac devices. Right. So they develop the info stealers also for the Macs. Unfortunately, the malware can work on Mac devices too.
Okay, so you say that uh, the, the information is really the crown jewels that are sitting uh, in, in our com browsers and also in all our sort of uh, files in our computer. Yes. So it could be credit card details, user ID, passwords, addresses. That's correct. So all sorts. What do they do with this information? They sell it, I guess. A lot of things. Unfortunately, a lot of things because you can monetize this data in completely different ways. For example, if we're speaking about social media accounts, that for example, somebody stored his Facebook account inside the, inside the browser, they can hijack this account and basically on behalf of somebody else, spread misinformation, fake news, or even spread info theaters using his account. This is also doable. If we speak about the employees that store credentials for their companies inside the browser, they can take this data, remotely access this company, and in the worst case scenario, deploy ransomware. In even more worst case scenario, they can stay a long time in somebody else's network to collect the data from them, like a corporate espionage. And there is a different ways and very creative ways how threat actor can use this information from the passwords. But what about personal data? What about the data that you store inside the autofills, your first name, your last name, maybe your social security or ident identification number? We know the threat actors, they take a personal data basically to steal your identity. So if I have your first name, last name, full address, uh, maybe place of birth, your local ID, uh, for example, US to social security, in different countries it's different kind of ID, I can simply steal your identity. And we, we know that it's happening, unfortunately. So the, I, I presume that the attackers will get all this information and then they go back and say, okay, this is for, you know, uh, corporate potentially selling to, you know, uh, information uh, access brokers who are interested in corporate enterprises. Yeah. This is for, I don't know, cyber criminals who specialize in credit cards. So they kind of like, I, I, I'm guessing they kind of split the... So this business works <laughs> because it's a real cyber crime business, yeah? It works in a very interesting way. We call them in Hudson Rock threat actors category one and threat actors category two. For the category one, those are the bad guys, they only perform info stealer attacks. So they only willing to infect as many computers as possible. Later, when they get this data, they finish their campaign, they reselling this data to category two. And those are the guys that each one of them is expertise, has expertise in their own... Uh, Area of crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they take the data and they say, I'm only doing credit card fraud. So we take from this data only data from the credit cards. Then it goes to somebody else and they say, I know how to deploy ransomware. So I'm only interested in the remote accesses. And then goes to somebody else that says, I'm expert in identity theft. I'm only interested in personal data. So everyone takes a little bit from this data because it is his or maybe her core uh, expertise. Oh wow, amazing. And of course at your presentation you also talked about how you managed to de anonymize two uh, threat actor groups. Yeah. Um, can we assume that these uh, threat actors then are not very smart then because they expose themselves? First of all, I don't want to call anybody not smart <laughs> because you know somebody who is in the cybercrime business they usually... Um, they can think outside the box. Yeah, they think outside the box correctly. But at the end of the day, they're humans. Oh, that's true, yeah. And what yeah. humans tend to do, they tend to make mistakes. So sometimes it happens to the cyber criminals too. So maybe he was testing some kind of new malware that he wanted to rent, and by accident, you know, double-clicked, and they infected his or her device. Okay, so talking about uh, our devices being infected by info stealers, right? How would we as ordinary people know whether it has been infected? With antivirus? Uh, software? Unfortunately, no. Unfortunately, there is no certificate that cyber criminals gives you. You are being infected by the info stealer. That does not exist, yeah. Um, uh, the best way is to use free tools to monitor yourself. Uh, we at Hasenrog have those tools. So at hasenrog.com domain, you can completely for free check your own exposure to this threat and at least be aware if you're infected or no. The next one is just to be aware that the info stealer exists because unfortunately antivirus does not always protect you 100%. Uh, so the best way here is just to make sure 
that you, do, you don't download any pirated software, you always buy legal software, you don't access any questionable sites, you, if, you, if you have a gut feeling that something here is wrong, maybe it's better to close this window and not execute any kind of files. Okay, so another question people might have is that, okay, say I, you know, for, for some reason I click on some uh, questionable site and then, you know, it gets downloaded. Does it stay persistent in my system? No. Um, InfoCity is operated a little bit in a different way. Because if the malware stays persistent to the computer, it's a little bit of noise for the security systems. So what InfoCities are doing, and I'm speaking about the 99.9% .9 of modern InfoCities that we see today, they steal the data and delete themselves immediately. Right, okay. So they even ah. don't stay on the computer. Right, okay. So yeah. they're, they're, they're smart in that way, so they don't get uh, picked up or detected then. Yeah. But you know what? What is also interesting? Sometimes we see people that infect themselves on a de on, on multiply, uh, multiple multiple equations. Yes. Okay. yes, 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 yes. So it's a it's a good example of a little bit bad practices of cyber security. But uh, just to make sure that InfoSteer is not staying persistent on on the device. Well, I guess there's some good news then, right? Uh, if you know, I for for one day I forgot or or I threw caution to the wind and then you know I, I click on some malicious site, but the next day it will be gone. Yes, but you need to know that all, all the data was already stolen. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah of course, yeah. of course. Yeah, so it will be gone. Yeah, you don't have malware on, running on your computer. That's definitely good news. But you need to be aware that you need that everything is already right. stolen by the hackers. Okay, so um, you talk about some, uh, some sort of misconceptions that we may have, right? Yeah. Like, um, okay, you know, we have 2FA or we have strong passwords, but yeah. it's going to uh, it overcome all these challenges, the info stealers. It's not... Yes, yes. So um, one, of the, one of the biggest misconceptions that people say, I have multi-factor authentication on my account, so I don't care. Even, even if my password will be compromised, I still have this SMS that I will receive or, right. I, or I have this like a Google app that I need to uh, check, the, check the number. But info stealers, they also steal the cookies. And basically the cookies, this is what other service leaves on your computer. Later, when you come back, they will not ask you again for your password. This is the example that the next time that you, lo you log into some kind of service, you don't need to re-login all the time. You execute it login once, and then it's valid for maybe one month, maybe three months, maybe half a year. Why? Because of the cookies. Site, so like, other service like recognize you as somebody that's already been here. So if the threat actor take those cookies and take the credentials, they can impersonate to you so that they can log in even without multi-factor authentication because other service believes that's actually you. Right, okay. Can I, can I just ask one um, simple question? Uh, some of these session cookies are only live for, I don't know, five minutes, right? Yeah. Banking, banking yeah. Yes. cookies. So, yes. So I can say, okay, they can't steal my banking, you know, uh, my, my, my assets on, uh, in my bank, right? Because, you know, even with the cookies, they can't get in because it expires. You're correct. Banking cookies expires very fast, yes. But it's a little bit depends on different securities. Uh, I also have a little bit bad news here because the info stores, they know how to take a full digital footprint of your computer. So threat actors can literally impersonate your device. So it depends a little bit of anti fraud system, but if they can impersonate to physical your computer and have your um, username and the password, in some times they will able to log in also without the cookies. Again, I don't want to say yes or no, depends on different cases. Um, but I can also share some tips about sites that don't have short cookies, yeah? By the way, the banking example is really good examples because indeed, when you close the, your account, it's almost not possible to log in automatically. If you have sensitive account that you want to protect from this cookie case, you just need to log out manually, like, you know, click log out manually, and when you log out manually from the account, it will kill the cookie session. So even if the threat actor will try to bypass the multi-factor authentication, the cookie will be not, not be valid because you physically log out from the session.
it's the tip that I can share. So it's very important that after we, you know, uh, access a certain every application, we actually physically click logout. It's very important. I know that this is very inconvenient, but it will help for your security dance for yes. Right, okay. So uh, final question, Info Stealers have been around I think for quite some time. That's uh, correct. Credit card fraud has been around for what, two decades, right? That's correct. <laughs> so um, are we seeing an upward trend or a downward trend? Uh, uh, you know, is it something that is of a legacy kind of crime? Unfortunately, no. We see this Info Stealer is on the rise. I need to say that law enforcement agencies doing a very good job to try to track the info stealers operators, they even closed one of the info stealer families during the last year. They even suspended one of the info stealer families uh, a few days ago. But unfortunately, if they closed one, there will be another five. So I don't see any solution in the future, but uh, this is definitely on the rise. So the important thing is to have uh, sessions like this where we share these kind of threats and make people aware of That's the kind correct. of threat out there and we can yes. all protect ourselves. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Right, okay. So thank you so much, Leonid, for your time today to share with us thank on you. this info stealers and how we should be careful about downloading information from pirated software and yeah. malicious yeah. websites. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much.